We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. We would like to start slowly. Uh, we can see that uh, we are still gathering on our auditory. So if you are with us online, please send us some emote icons or whatever you would like to share with us. Just let us know that everything is fine and that you are with us. Right. Okay, so just a few seconds and I think we can start. Okay, so yeah, we hope that everything is fine. We will see in a moment because we are going to ask you some questions and we will ask you to vote in our poll. So let's move on. Um, so first of all, who actually are we? So I'm Simon. And uh, my name is Karolina. And we both work at the Copernicus Science Center when, where we are an event specialist and we are asked to present you our new exhibition, The Future is Today, Digital Brain, which would be really exciting because our new exhibition is something really new. Right. Uh, so in order to start, I will also introduce you uh, that we'll use the Mentimeter platform and we would like to do a short test if you are all connected uh, and if we can work together like that. Yeah, so the best way to handle the application is also for you guys that you are with us on site, just open the, um, the website menti.com and type there the code number that you can see on the screen. And the same, please do uh, for you that you are all online. With. Right. Uh, so yes, I see some likes, so I see you're connected. Yeah, you can send us likes, that would be really appreciated. Really but nice. I sent it will show us that you are actually with us. Yeah, that's a really relief. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, so you can also scan the QR code, obviously. Uh, so we can move yeah. to our first question for you guys. So in order to introduce and to get some interaction, we would like to ask you, what's the level of your energy today? We give you a few seconds to uh, give your response. Yeah, and we will see the results in a moment and we will comment on it because we are a little interesting. We are charged up and ready to, uh, to go. Okay, so I think we can show the results. Okay, it's working That's and perfect. it is so good news. Yeah, we are very happy. We are all here all together. Okay, so most of us are uh, around four. That is a really great news. So now this is our task to keep it and uphold it till the end. Uh, one person is, oh, two persons are uh, around one. So we will try to charge you a little bit up. But the, 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 the most important thing, it's working. And right. It's a really great news. So if we are connected, Let's get started. Yeah, so firstly, just a short uh, outline. We will start with a short discussion about trust, especially in the context of artificial intelligence. And then we will move to the relations that we can establish, for example, with a technology. And again, especially with the artificial intelligence. And in the end... At the end, we can think about prospectives and the future that the technology will lead us on. Yeah, we will see if there will be time for Q&A part. If not, just leave your uh, questions on the chat and then we will respond to them later. Okay, so move on. So we would like to start with our first exhibit that is on our exhibition that welcomes our guest. And we would like you to ask yourself a question. Do you think that the boy that you can see on, on, on the screen actually trusted our exhibit. So let's just watch the movie and then we will discuss it. Yeah. There should be also a sound, but yeah, for some reason there isn't, but it's not that important. 
The important is the image. Yeah, let's follow the video. So maybe we can comment a little bit. Yes, so this was our first exhibit. It's called Trustabot. And basically you trust and trust it with your mobile. It takes it up for like five meters and then drops it and then catches it on that basket. Mm. But I think that the most important uh, part of this movie is the reactions of that boy, because that is the boy who entrusted our exhibit with his mobile. And as we can see, he was pretty tense. Even if he didn't ask himself whether he trusts our exhibit, we can easily read it from his nonverbal language because he has his finger crossed. He was quite nervously looking up and down. And um, uh, after all, we, can, we were able to see a big relief in that, that, that little boy. So now we would like to ask you second question. If you would trust our exhibit as you saw before with your own mobile phone. And just in a moment, we will see the results. Yeah, just a few seconds for you to give us the response. Hmm? And let's see it together. OK, so I will press to show results. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. a very interesting result. Yeah, I didn't expect that. It's equally uh, divided into two groups. That's interesting. That's, but we will come back to this later because in, in about two minutes, we will ask you one more question. But now let's just uh, move to the trust itself. Because for now, we would like to concentrate on a trust uh, in a context of social interactions. because. We think, and in my opinion, right now, um, the trust is always connected or almost every time is connected with other people. Because we can imagine that uh, it would be really difficult to live without the basic level of trust. For example, every time when we leave our home, for example, we are scared that the elevator may stop between floors. Or for example, at the crossing zebra, we would be stressed that for example, a car would hit us. Or in the afternoon during our break, ordering our favorite tea, we would be a little bit scared that for example, it would be poisonous. And the truth is that we must give a little bit of our trust and uh, give up a little bit of control over it to other humans and believe in their good intentions. Right. So um, trust is really important because it's basically reduced the complexity of our life and it make it more predictable. And I think that is the most uh, important part here. So um, now we would like to ask you, so if we rather tend to trust other people, how you would answer our second question in that part? Yeah, that's it. So uh, the second question is, if you would trust the human with the similar task that we uh, asked for an exhibit to uh, relieve the phone from the five meter high and let someone to catch it from down. Yeah, I'm really interested in the results. Maybe. We will see them in a moment. Okay, I think that's, that's the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. as we thought so. So that also might give us some hint that we might right now trust more technology in some fields in our life, which is for me quite optimistic. Uh, yeah. The in, a, in, in a case of new technologies and the future, because we are living in a verge of a big AI revolution, but before we dive in into it, we would like to stop for a bit and think about it, what the artificial intelligence is, really is. Right. So in order to move forward with our presentation, uh, 
I think we need some definition that we can base on and then uh, we are all together on the same page. So uh, the first important question is how we can define the artificial intelligence. Uh, and then the, we need a definition that everyone could agree that it's in fact a very difficult question. Uh, and while the uh, adjective artificial in this context, it's kind of intuitively uh, understand it, that we can exchange it, for example, for computer intelligence or just something that it's not nature-based, then the intelligence itself, it's kind of difficult question to, to put to get an answer that everyone could agree. Uh, so now I would like to just propose you one of the definition of the intelligence, that it's a definition of uh, concept of the intelligence, not necessarily the human intelligence. Uh, and such a definition followed by Wang from 2019, uh, that it's a researcher on uh, the machine learning and artificial intelligence sector. Okay, so let me read it uh, out loud. So intelligence is the capacity of an information processing system to adapt to its environment while operating while with insufficient knowledge and resource. Right. So I will leave you this uh, open, uh, this question as open for you if you think that you like this definition or not. Uh, but for me, important fact here is that the system that has to make a decision uh, is never 100% sure if such a decision is correct because it's not operating with the full data set. Uh, okay. So we can based on this definition of intelligence, and now we can move forward to the definition of artificial intelligence. And here I would like to propose to you the definition that it's already agreed from uh, almost 40, 40 countries that are members of the OECD organization, that it's Organization for Economical Cooperation and Development. Uh, and this definition uh, was agreed through the uh, first regulations that were established for uh, uh, management of the artificial intelligence in the international concept. Um, so I can ask you, Shimon, to read the definition. Okay, so I can read it for you. So an AI system is a machine-based system that can have a set of human-defined objectives, make predictions, recommendations, or decisions influencing real or virtual environments. AI systems are designed to operate with varying level. Right. So uh, we can stay with this definition as a working definition for today, for our purpose. Uh, and here I would like to just point out that such an artificial intelligence system can make a decision that influenced our environments. And whether we are uh, aware of this or not, uh, there is already a lot of artificial intelligence applications that are uh, influencing our decision, that are changing our uh, screens, everything that we watch every day, and they are processing our data. So usually we are actually not aware that such a systems already uh, are influenced us. Okay, so we set a common definition. Uh, we, Caroline said some few words where we can meet with such technology. And now we would like to ask you another question, whether you would trust an NI on those four fields that you can see in our question. And we'll see the results in a moment and we will shortly discuss them because the answers may be obvious, but not all of them. Exactly, so if you could consciously decide whether you trust uh, an artificial intelligence suggestion or not, what would be your response? Okay, so we can show the results now. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, so it's a little bit like we predicted. Okay, so yeah, it's not that strange that we trust, that for, for example, an NI to find for us the fastest route because basically we are using it every, uh, every time, uh, every, even every day well, almost, for example, during uh, Google, using Google Maps. But next questions okay. are a little bit more complicated because, okay, we can entrust 
someone with our money or with our medical uh, health and diagnosis, but we got used to depend on the opinion of the experts, of the true person on it. We don't have that much experience with, um, for example, financial investments or medical diagnosis made by AI, but I think that it's quite optimistic that there is almost 21 uh, answers indicating that someone would trust the uh, medical uh, diagnosis made by AI. It's, it's a really good yeah. sign. And as we thought that it would uh, show it like this, that the most controversial part is whether we, such as whether we trust the AI uh, with the choice of our heart. It's not, for me, it's not that strange. It's quite obvious because love is something that- uh, We would like to take a choice, right? Yeah, yeah. And we, it born, born in our heart and it's something that can't be explained by just a simple code, but no. maybe not simple, but just the code. Okay, so move on. Not at all. So as we see, we trust more and more in the technology, also in the suggestion of the artificial intelligence. Uh, so in order to move the next section of our presentation, uh, let me ask you, uh, if there is anyone who really wouldn't like to meet a perfect partner, uh, I would leave this question open and uh, keep it for you to find your answer. And in meantime, uh, let's see together the next uh, exhibit that we have in our uh, exhibition, uh, that it's a gatebox. Let's see it together. So it is basically speaking Japanese, so we can see that there are subtitles, but for some reason we have some technical problems with sound. Yep. And for you guys that you are on site, we are really sorry about this. I hope that uh, our on site participants have an opportunity to, for example, watch it. Uh, yeah, on from direct link, yeah. so then they hear the all music as well. Uh, you just have the subtitles, so you also can figure out what. Uh, what she said. Right, our moderator is trying to try to work on it. Okay, so I think that you, Caroline, may uh, describe it more precisely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. especially for those you guys that we, we, you are with, our, with us on site, but maybe our moderators will handle the sound and it will work uh, yeah, in a while. later. Uh, that's it. So uh, she's cute, isn't it? Uh, just what you could see, it's a uh, Azuma, uh, it's a hologram, it's holographic girl, uh, it's anime character, and it's artificial intelligence too. So the user uh, can interact with her, can speak. Uh, she recognizes the face and the voice. Uh, actually, she can be also connected with the smart houses and manage the house while the user is in office, for example. Uh, so it's meant to be a companion, maybe the partner. Uh, for now, she's just in the Japanese market, but probably she will, this, this will be spread all around the world. Uh, so it's the first actually uh, proposition to have uh, the artificial intelligence partner. So the new way of interact with technology in the very uh, deepest level of our human side. Mm -hmm. And here uh, arise a question uh, and let me ask you, uh, do you think that we can have really authentic and uh, authentic and meaningful relation with the program, with something that now we consider as a program? Uh, so I'm very curious about your response. Yeah, just a few seconds. Shall I show the results? Show it. Oh yes, yeah. For for us. 
uh, as a people from this generation, it's still very uh, difficult to imagine to have a real, something that we consider as real relation with the uh, program, with the artificial intelligence assistant. But who know, maybe in future, it will be much more intuitive for a people. Uh, yeah, but still there are a lot of uh, fears and uh, we are very concerned how it should be and also how it should work. For example, I could think that if I share such a lot of private data, maybe it could be some leakage that I wouldn't like to, to have. Maybe uh, this assistant could be hacked by some people and uh, I could be manipulated. So uh, let me ask you again, uh, what could be your also main concerns? I propose some of examples here and uh, I again give you a few seconds to uh, give us the response if you feel it like that. Me personally, I would be very sad if uh, such artificial intelligence would leave me alone yeah, you know, I heard that during pandemics, uh, the replica application was, however, it is on the market for for few years now, but it became really popular during that period because pe many people felt a bit lonely. And replica is basically the artificial intelligence, but it is just a chatbot, but I installed it also a, f a few weeks ago. And it was kind of amazing because it, it is gathering information about you. It asks you a lot of confidential questions, and then it can relate to the uh, things that you said before, and it's starting to look like a real relationship. And I saw on many forums that many people really built a, a kind of a relationship with, with, the, with their replicas. There was even a possibility to change her clothes and so on to customize it as, as you want. So, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a very sensitive question. How we in future we interact, it's still, uh, I think, undetermined. So let's see the responses together. Oh, yes. So, yeah, we all feel a little bit uh, concerned about leakage of the personal data. It's uh, understandable. And yeah, I think it's quite uniform that we also are afraid of the loss of the sense of authenticity and also the changes that can can be seen in the society. Okay, uh, could you just uh, develop a little bit that being fooled by by AI? What does it mean? Yeah, for me, I, I'm afraid that if I would fall in love in such artificial intelligence, okay, and for some reason it will break down, <laughs> break up with me, uh, I would be fooled by such program. Okay. I okay. wouldn't be happy to in that have context, such. Uh, okay, now I, I, I fully get it. So let's move on then. Yeah, but I hope that artificial intelligence in general should support us as a society, as a humanity. So I hope that there, are, there could be some positive aspects of maybe such uh, relations. So I uh, ask you to think together. Maybe there could be some uh, contributes that would give us some uh, positive aspects. Could you move to the yes. next question? So now I can give you about one minute and let's think together uh, which kind of profits we could uh, find out from such relations. Do you think about some profits, Shimon? Uh, from the relation with, with the NI. Um... Not at all. <laughs> you know, I'm quite con uh, uh, how to say this. Mm. Confused. Not confused, but uh, conservative. Conservative. About it. Yeah. Yeah. We still. It's very difficult for us to imagine how it should be really uh, in the future. But yeah, let's see. Maybe result together. Maybe our audience okay. has some pro uh, it will ideas. It inspire us a bit. Okay, all time availability, yeah, that's true. Okay, so there is a zero also, so someone like me, uh, rather without a trust. But of course, I'm just saying like this, but there are many fields that I would like uh, invite the AI with a pleasure. For example, a self-driving car, that would be amazing, just reading books during trips, for example, to mountains or something. Okay, we are slowly gathering the answers. Yeah, being free. It's going, Maybe. 
We're get some new knowledge. Bigger and bigger. Yeah. Uh, so as we can see, uh, almost perfect. That one is interesting. What's the perfect then? Yeah, I think that the here we need to define it uh, exactly. But that word almost. Yeah, I think that it is impossible to be perfect, even yeah. for the AI that is based only on the calculations. Right. So uh, as we can see, there are a lot of uh, pros and cons uh, about the relation that we can establish with the artificial intelligence assistant. Uh, and now I would just to point out uh, one thing that while we think about relations, maybe emotional relations with the uh, such uh, assistants, we all time think about the uh, characters or robots that are human-like, that are humanoidal. Uh, and we think that it's very intuitive for us to interact uh, with such humanoidal robots or holograms as Azuma is. But is that really uh, easy as we would like to to be yeah by I, I, I would like to just relate to one that there is uh, mm -hmm. no drama yeah no so, drama <laughs> i think the relationship without the drama that would be also nice uh but i think that it shows us also that we feel as a society a bit lonely because there is some answers that it help us with the loneliness which is really symptomatic and quite sad I think we need to rethink the whole uh, culture, how it works. But that's the the, the, the different topic. So, okay, Maybe we can it. move on. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why we do the humanoidal robots that could be perfect and could support us. Yeah, because we are sick for a true friend or love because it's much easier to trust an, an AI that is all, all, uh, always for us, not other humans. You yeah, okay, so? just move on. Yeah, so as I pointed out, uh, it's a very interesting question for me, whether the interaction with humanoidal robot, it's such uh, intuitive? What do you think, Shimon? Um, we will discuss it in a moment, because first we would like to show you, uh, no, first you would, we would ask you a question. Do you know what is uncanny valley? Because it might be a new term for you, uh, but we will dive in. Uh, into it in a moment. And it is really connected with one of our exhibits on our new exhibition, uh, one which is my favorite, I must admit. Uh, but okay, let's see the answers. No. no. Okay. Uh, some people uh, know, know what does it mean. So we will ask you later also to. Uh, your opinion while, while we already yes. introduced this statement. But most of them not. Okay, so we will show you in a moment our next movie with our exhibit called Baby Clone. I hope that there will be sound, but if not, there will be subtitles. So that would be enough. Uh, the important thing is the reactions of people. So please yeah. concentrate on them. And in a moment, we will discuss discuss it further yeah Nie to, że to może być tak realne. Jest taki dość, dość niepokojący. Człowiek ma ochotę to po sprawdzić, czy to w ogóle żyje. Moje wyobrażenie na temat robotów się kończą na pierwszych częściach Gwiezdnych Wojen. No, byłem ciekaw, czy też pachnie jak niemowlę, ale nie. Emocjonalne poruszenie. Byłam ciekawa, czy będzie reagował na mój dotyk na przykład po rękach i po brzuchu. No i troszkę dość przerażająco jednak oddycha. To, mm... Ciekaw byłem, czy nie jest chory. <laughs> czy chora. Jakoś nie pasuje mi nazwa robot do tego nijak. To jest mimo wszystko dzie znaczy dziecko. Dziecko jest tutaj bardziej, bardziej adekwatnym pojęciem. Nawet jeśli to jest dziecko robot.
Okay, so let me introduce you to, as I said, our my favorite exhibit on our exhibition, the baby clone. And as you were able to see, people were pretty confused how to even name it. Is it a robot? Is it a baby? Is it a doll? Because it is also looks like a realistic doll. It breathes also. Mm. So I, I remember when I first uh, had, had an opportunity to interact with the baby clone, and I was really curious about it. I mean, I approached it uh, at once. Uh, I take it, I touched it. Uh, I felt that it is actually cold, not hot, not warm, uh, which was a little bit strange, but still I was really interested in it. And after some time, I felt, mm, I don't know if I can call it a, a parental instinct because I'm not a father yet, but it was something like this because I really wanted to take care of it, even though I was fully aware it's just a robotic doll. Uh, and I started to examine it a little bit. So I twisted a little bit its ankle and then Caroline, which was, uh, which we, she was next to me, reacted a, a, a bit differently. You can describe it. Yeah, you, for me, it was very difficult and strange feeling. Uh, why I saw that Shimon, it's twisted its leg and the baby doesn't react. I automatically feel sick. Uh, I couldn't watch it anymore. I had to just move out to that, don't see it anymore. Uh, so I had very different and strange feeling. Yeah, so basically, as you were able to see from the reactions of our participants uh, and from our stories about it, the Uncanny Valley is something that probably is, uh, is a real thing. Uh, we will discuss in a moment uh, the scientific background be, uh, behind this. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Um, I, I, I wanted to say something more, but okay, we can just move to the next slide because the concept of the Uncanny Valley introduced for the first time Masahiro Mori in his publication uh, in 1970. He was a Japanese engineer. He was working in a field of robotics and automatics. Uh, and he wrote that article, but he pointed out that it is not scientific art uh, article. It was something that he uh, had a chance to observe and based on his own experience, because for most of his time, he was working on a prosthetic hands, uh, which were more and more realistic. Uh, so some people uh, that uh, interacted with such hands uh, for the first time, if they didn't know that it is artificial, but it was attached to, to a real person, um, they firstly, shake the hand, but then they felt that it is a little bit cold and it feels a little bit strange. And they, when they realized that it is artificial, actually, they were starting to feeling something that he called later uncanny valley. So as we can see on that graph, it could uh, help us uh, understand what does it mean and what is the etymology of, of that concept. So we can see here the graph the relation between familiarity and the human likeness. And at the very beginning of the graph, there is an industrial robot. So it is something that is designed only to make some works uh, for us. So it could be, for example, a robotic arm that really precisely cuts something in a glass in a factory, for example. But as we go further on our graph, we can see that there would be a humanoid robot. But it is a really wide category because humanoid robot could be something that uh, has head, torso, legs, and, uh, and for example, uh, arms, but it is still looks like a robot. And now we would like to show you our last short movie uh, for today. It's a robot from our laboratory lab in Copernicus Science Center. Yeah, right. Let's see it together. Nook, nook. My favorite. Hello, everyone. Would you like to have some fun? Would you like to see me dancing? Let's get started. Ice. 
Oh, what am I doing on the floor? Yeah! Whoops, I can't get back on my feet. I'll have to wait until someone helps me. And that's it! Back on my feet! I feel better like that! So yes, um, I think that this robot is kind of sweet. Um, we obviously pre-programmed it with his text that he right. said that, would you like to see me dancing? And he uh, ma made some moves, but then uh, something strange happened because he fell. And it wasn't planned. Uh, and then we wasn't sure what to do. So we decided to leave it and see what was going to happen. And uh, we realized that some automatic algorithm started to work. And he was uh, talking yeah. to himself that he even need help from someone. But then he handled it to stand it mm -hmm. on his own. Uh, and by the accident, that piece of material uh, Mm, yeah, wrapped just... around his uh, arm and th the whole movie uh, ended yeah. just for us uh, so beautiful for yeah, me so yeah, it's very touched uh, right but it's a robot that it's uh, meant to be entertain us right yeah and the, 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 such robots aren't scary i know that there are some robots on the market that you can buy that you they have something a screen on their torso and you can uh, uh, use them to make party started oh, yeah. uh, and a little bit dance with them. Uh, but as I said, we don't uh, scare such robots. But when we move further uh, on our graph, there is a kind of a dare's hold uh, after which the graph drastically drops. And it's really hard to establish where that point is because the white of robots that we might interact nowadays is uh, is, as I said, really wide, but the gap between uh, the last humanoid robot that doesn't induce in us uncanny valley and the real person uh, on the other peak is called an uncanny valley. You can see from the shape of a chart that there is a kind of a valley. Mm. Right. And um, some scientists think that uh, the whole phenomena comes from uh, the basic predisposition of our brain because we are seeking for the interaction with other people. So we are looking for faces. And for example, sometimes uh, we have a cognitive bias when we look at clouds or for example, stains or at least uh, or yeah. a, a, a cup of cappuccino, cup right? of cappuccino and we right. see faces in, in it, uh, but we fully aware that it was just a mistake. But the different story is when we uh, by accident, think that a humanoid robot actually is a real person. And when we realized after some time that we uh, uh, have mistaken it, we feel a little bit uncanny. Exactly. So that was my feeling when I uh, saw for the first time the baby clone. Uh, and I think exactly that was the uncanny uh, valley uh, feeling. Yeah. Uh, and that... That slowly brings us to the question whether you had an opportunity to feel something like this. If you never heard about such phenomena, maybe you can recall such situation. Because when I was preparing that presentation, uh, I realized that a few years ago, when I was watching the remake of The Lion King a few days ago, it, this photo obviously is not from the original movie, it's, a, it's just a real lions. Uh, nevertheless, Mm, I felt a little bit strange and later we were discussing about it because, you know, they were like real lions, but they were they were w walking around the safari singing about their love and uh, making fun. Uh, and on the other hand, they were just like real lions. So I felt that it was a little bit unnatural. And a few weeks ago, I realized that was exactly it, that it was the uncanny valley phenomena. Okay, so now I would like to ask you, uh, have you ever experienced such such thing? 
Yeah, just so just a few seconds for you. Now, as you know, what does that term actually mean? Mm -hmm. Some of us, yes. Some of us, yes. Uh, to mm -hmm. those of you who never felt such concept, I'm afraid that we are going to experience it more and more uh, because, yeah, we are going to be surrounded by, by humanoid, humanoid robots. robots. Um, That's it. So maybe we should think more about the design of the robots, also the one which maybe will help with the older people or yeah. some other usage. Yeah, and that was exactly the point of the article by uh, Mori, because he wanted to point out that such um, phenomena may occur and it would be a tip for a designers of a robot to uh, design it not that uh, similar to real person. Yeah, maybe it would be too much uncomfortable for us to interact with such a robot. Yeah, okay. So we can uh, slowly move on to a summary. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our time is uh, up to finish. So we would like to just to sum up quickly. Uh, we are very happy to have opportunity to be with you today and as we introduce our uh, exhibits from uh, Digital Brain, uh, we passed through the trust that we could uh, give to the technology that we trust more and more in the, a lot of areas of our uh, human side also. Uh, we also think about the relations in the much deeper level uh, that we could establish with the technology and maybe in future it will be much more uh, intuitive, who know. Uh, at, at the end, we really have to think how we will uh, design the robots that will surround us in the future, uh, because maybe it's not as obvious attitude uh, as we would think mm -hmm. that uh, such humanoidal robots should uh, be such comfortable for us to, to interact, to be with. Mm -hmm. But there's also one thing that I was thinking about it, uh, about it recently, because right now when we talk about artificial intelligence, most of the, the, the time we think about machine learning. So it needs a data and that the data uh, can provide only humans, exactly. at least most of the data. So it's a bit of our responsibility to shape the artificial intelligence, whether it will be based on a reliable source of information. So everyone is an expert in his own field. And I hope that in the future, all the programmers that are responsible for projecting such artificial intelligence would depend on our impact that we give now. Yeah, that's. I think that's that's the, the really uh, optimistic thing that we are commonly responsible for the shape of the artificial intelligence uh, in the future. At least I believe so. Right. So having this responsibility, uh, yeah, please be aware. And everything that you share in the internet could be used uh, in the future by uh, by the programs. Okay. Okay, so in the end, we would like to invite you, if you ever have an opportunity to be in Warsaw, to, in, to, to come to the Copernicus Science Center and to see our new exhibition on your own, because it, it is... Um, yeah, very inspiring and also give us this uh, new impact of awareness, how the future will look us yeah. or the future is today. <laughs> and the whole exhibition brings a lot of questions that we can ask ourselves and think whether we have our own opinions on the shape of the future that we are slowly going to uh, engage and maybe we can still have at least a minimum uh, impact of the shape of it. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's it for that's today. It. We are really uh, thankful for the technical issues that they were just a few of them yeah. and that you were all with us today yeah thank you a lot and yeah uh, if you have any questions you can you know write to us uh, on our uh, igf page or for those of you that are on site you can just come to us and talk with us okay, okay thank you